the time has arrived. The 2024 World Long Drive season is here, but somehow it feels different. I mean, everyone's freaking super good, super fast, and I beat, I beat them all at one, one point or another, so I know I can do it. I just got to square it up and hit the center of the face and hit a big ball at the right time. It's been four months since Kyle Berkshire and Monica Living were crowned world champions. When it comes to your emotions in long drive, I would say that you can use them to your benefit if you can harness them well. I think that's something that I do do well. I like to really dive into those emotions and use those to propel me through an event. Today on the West Coast, they become the hunted. Long drivers from throughout the world converge, all with one single solitary goal. It's a tough field. Everybody is, I think, just as capable to win at any moment. I've yet to come across somebody that ever seems like some kind of easy, easy win. I've really honed in on my accuracy, and I think that's what a lot of people know me as, is being a really accurate hitter and someone that's going to be, you know, in every golf tournament and be able to put pressure on any anybody I'm going head-to-head -head against. Um, they, they know I'm going to be able to put balls in play and um, never really going to be a tough out. Who will become the next big star? Uh, there's a lot of big personalities. There's a lot of yelling, a lot of distractions. So in its own way, it is very mental. Pressure is a little bit different out here. I feel like it's very fast paced and there's so much adrenaline. So I actually think it's easier pressure wise than traditional golf. You don't have as much time to get in your head, which is what I like about it. will become the next champion. It's not just a, a bash fest where you've got unlimited golf. Everybody out here can hit it, but it's about being able to hit it, obviously in the grid, in the moment, the right type of ball flights, launch angle, spin rate on the right side of the grid. There's a big mental component, and, and it's about who can pull it off in that moment. So um, it takes, I think, some experience and uh, some cojones to be able to pull it off. We're about to find out. The story begins at the first event of the season. Welcome to Huntington Beach and the World Long Drive MB Invitational, presented by Hyundai. Finally, the 2024 season is upon us. The greatest long drive hitters in the world have descended on here. Huntington Beach, California, the Huntington Club, and alongside my partner, love this guy right here, two-time World Long Drive Champion, Art Selinger. I am the coach, and Art, first and foremost, the setting is spectacular. The grid is a little bit unorthodox, but as always, the competition, top shelf. They're gonna have a dog leg right uphill here at the Huntington Club. Speed is the great separator in sports, and Coach Long Drive is no exception. Folks, fasten your seatbelt. You're about to see some major heat in this match play competition. We'll get into all the hitters and the rules and all of that, but there's another very important component to this event. With more on that, let's send it over to the third member of our broadcast team, Jeff Farley. Thanks, Coach. In addition to the Long Drive Championship, there's a second component of the event today, and that is the cancer research from drivingoutcancer.com. You'll be able to scan the QR code and donate today to help out the cause. Back to you, Coach. Let's take a look at the weather here right on the beach. When you're this close to the water, you're going to have wind, and there's also a chance of some rain later in the forecast. You're going to get a lot of different conditions right here. You get the wind swirling and churning, and at this grid here at the Huntington Club, the first hole, dog big right, par five up the hill, predominant wind from the right. Players have a lot of shot making to do. And speaking of shot making, how about the Hyundai Conquer the Weekend spot on the grid? The men are at 400, then you've got the women earlier in the grid, but if they land a the ball there, oh my goodness. And keep it there, they're going to get the Hyundai Santa Fe. And Driving look at the home. women right here that we've got in this final coach. you got the reigning world champion, Monica Living. Oh, it's going to be great. She's got, I mean, last year she had a couple of wins. She could do it right out of the gate, but she's going to be taking on Phyllis Metty in that first semifinal. Now for the men, here are the top eight seeds, the young star, Jack Smith. But look at the two names right behind him. Justin James and Kyle Berkshire. you got three of the top four in the world. Zach Holton in there as well. So here's what the brackets look like. And 
there's really good matchups. Remember, the seeds don't necessarily always mean that who is going to win. Not at all. And again, this match play format is exciting. And when you go to the rules of this competition, Coach, these golf balls have to land in this fairway. They cannot go out and come back in. And the, co the club heads can form the USGA standards. We'll talk about this bonus ball. This is really unique. It's more about bonus time. Hit two balls in for the men, 350. You get 30 extra seconds, 280 for the women. It's certainly going to be a very special time here in Huntington. Now with the 2024 season about to get underway, I had a moment to sit with a few of the guys to check out how they are feeling before the real hitting begins. Jacob Galladay, Bobby Ray, the world champion Kyle Berkshire, former world champion Justin uh, James, Sam Twadell, and Jack Smith. Now, Kyle, I'm going to start with you. You're the reigning, defending, undisputed world champion. When you're at your very best, do you think that anybody sitting here or in the world can beat you? No, I think when I'm at my best, I'm very tough to beat, and uh, so it's all about bring your best when it matters. The last time the World Long Drive Tour was on the Golf Channel was back in 2020, and you're still here. Do you think you're better than you were then? Uh, yeah, I do feel like that because I actually know some stuff now. I was kind of a dork back then, um, but I got by, so now I can kind of figure out why it's going in the houses over there versus the Pacific Ocean over there, so I can hone that in a touch and hopefully, you know, hit the grid. So I would say I'm better. I won twice last year. All Here's right, six of the absolute very best. The World Long Drive is back on the Golf Channel in 2024, better than ever. World Long Drive is not just about long balls. It's also about the long journey of trying to end childhood cancer. The season's opening event brought the community together in support of driving out cancer. Donations are funding more research to help families and children fighting for their lives. It is a story well known to many parents. We're here for a purpose. Driving out cancer is an amazing thing. Every single day, a child loses their life to cancer. 46 kids every single day are diagnosed. That's every half hour of every day, kids get diagnosed. As far as Reese's disease, about three kids a day or 900 a year get diagnosed with that disease. And because it's so rare, it doesn't get that much funding. If only effort and fight equaled outcome, then our incredible son would still be here today. But unfortunately, we lost Reese in March of 2019. And here we are with you making good on that promise with athletes who are committed to making a difference to drive out cancer. So thank you for, for joining us in our fight. What a great cause World Long Drive is bringing here to Huntington Beach. Okay, when we come back, we're getting things started. The men and the women are all set to go. Who will be our first champion in 2024? We are about to find out. World Long Drive is brought to you by Hyundai. Add more joy to every journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event today. By Bridgestone Golf and the E9 Long Drive, the official ball of World Long Drive. E9 Long Drive, extreme ball speed, extreme distance. And by Montucky Cold Snacks, just beer, born in Bozeman. To achieve uh, my best this year, I think it's long drive is always a razor's edge between speed and uh, consistency, and it's kind of riding that line in terms of you know where your golf swing's at, selecting equipment, the type of shot you want to hit. So um, it is just uh, fine tuning everything so that when the big moments come, you can perform. So welcome back. It is time for our first quarterfinal matchup here in Huntington Beach. And Art, when you talk about Justin James, your 2017 World Champion, and then Sam Judah 
comes in as clearly the underdog in this matchup. He really does. I look at Justin James. He's kind of like in biology class dissecting it up. I have been down and talked to Greg Rose at Titleist Performance Institute, and he has maximized every fiber in his body. He has got a golf swing, but be careful with Sam. He has made some swing changes in the last year, and he's going to hit the grid. That's what he says. So to be clear, they're going to hit each have three balls from each side of the grid. So a little bit different than maybe what you're used to in years past. Good golf swing, good start. Again, he said, he said to me, I'm going to sacrifice speed for quality. I got to hit, I got to make golf swings now, coach. Great start, just getting that ball in. And that's critical because one more ball in, he qualifies for that bonus, bonus time. time. <laughs> and we'll tell you more about that as we get to it, but that's big. That one went north of 370. I really like how they've evolved the competition over the years, Art, and going back and forth to me, I like that a lot better. I love this action right here, both on the team, mano a mano. Justin chose to go second. He did have that option as the higher seed, and that ball will be out of play left. As you can see, you're going to see on flight scope there in the top right of your screen, you're going to see ball speed and spin, and I'll talk more about that, how important those are, as well as the apex, the height of the shot, if you can get that up there. So Sam Judah from Ozark, Alabama, did make the top 16 in last year's World Championships. So there's your, we're just going to get, uh, there is, there's the apex right there. What we're looking for in spin will be basically south of 2,200. We'd love that 19, 1800 right there. And of course, ball speed, fasten your seatbelt. You'll see some stuff here over 220 today for sure. Well, I tell you what, if you've never seen this man and his celebration when he won the world championship, you may want to go back on YouTube and take a look. That one is drifting off to the right. Will that stay in the grid? So and it does. So that will be a mark, or as we say here in this sport, a number. A number. And they will wait to see what that is. So have a look here at Sam. Good setup here. Nice lines. Right shoulders really low and underneath it. Aiming a little bit down that right side. This hole does dog leg left. And that is blown out way right, right there. So 384 there, coach, for a good start there for Justin James. And, and these players got here today with qualifying on the golf course, a very unique way to get there. Four holes were selected. They had four balls on each hole. And uh, they fought the conditions. And I think the best eight are right here. Yeah, I absolutely love it, too, because any tour that you're on, you're never going to qualify the same way. You're not going to play on the same grid or the same course. And that's what we had today. This is big top. Yep. This is going to hit the slot, and we'll see what kind of a bounce it gets. And again, we did have some rain earlier, and that's why you're going to see a little check. You're going to see what we call check when the ball bites and doesn't release for two reasons. Number one, we are uphill. Number two, we got some rain. So conditions for huge numbers, Coach, which these guys would normally be in that 420, 30 range. You're not going to maybe get here today. But there is a positive as we show you some replays first of Justin James. Look at that huge turn at the top. Drops it on the inside. Elevates, uses the ground well. Beautiful extension. Just awesome power. He did have two north of 350 art, so he's already uh, qualified for the bonus time, which will be 30 seconds after they each hit their six balls. All right, now Sam Judah, his fourth ball, he does have one north of 350, but he is six yards back of Justin James. Good ball there at 20, 2,500, though, high on the spin rate right there. That's going to be out of play. You know, Sam is the second most accurate hitter in the top 50 last season, so he is used to being in the grid a lot of the time. I think you're going to have to use, well, let's see if somebody keeps this apex down in that 160, 70 range to see if they can use the ground, maybe chase it up that grid. And that one will go out to the right. Now, keep in mind that the higher seed in each one of these matchups does have the option of going first or second and making uh, that selection. And I think, again, with this bonus time, that decision isn't as important. I think most of these players should probably get two in, and they're going to get that extra 30 seconds. How they use that is the biggest choice today. All right, so now the fifth ball for Judah. 
And that is, and he doesn't like it. No, you saw it right there, 3,300, so a little bit thin. Thin equals spin. That's low on the face, and it's not going to get much roll. But he does get his bonus time. Yes, he does. And that's very, very important. So that did clear the 350 mark. And you got to see, Art, that there is some drops on the camera lens. There's still a little bit of moisture out here. You can see the rain coming down over there on the lake. But it's not really affecting that much. It's not. That, that, that cold wind coming in from the right is affecting more of anything. Oh, that was a hard hit ball there. 220 with 1,500. Just mark that down right there. That's, that's what's going to produce big, big shots. And is that one going to stay in? And it does. So Justin James, another number on the board. And he's always such a cool character. And now Sam Judas says, give me a little juice, Art. Give me a little juice. Yes. <laughs> 216, but too high in that spin. I don't see the ball rolling that much to get there. I just don't. Not with that much spin. You can see it right there. It flew about 357 on your board, and it rolled seven yards. So that's a function of spin and height. All right, so now... Justin James will have his final ball, and then each player will have a bonus 30 seconds. And if we can cue in there, notice the tee height for Justin James. That's considered low for long drive, just barely above the crown. I like that decision for this grid setup. Okay. 224, fastest of the day. That is just absolute Nolan Ryan heat right there. And maybe it doesn't need to be said, but Justin James very much into his fitness, Art. Oh, gosh, goodness sakes. He has maximized every fiber again. Working with that team at TPI, his dad was always in great shape. His dad, Jerry James, won two senior world championships. Four hundred and five yards. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So 405 Five. for Justin James. Justin James, excuse me, we see our first what do we call it, 400 bagger? One more look at that one. Yeah, we'll look at Sam's uh, swing right here. Good turn. I like it right here. I like how he's elevated, drops it down the inside. That left foot better get out of the way or else that knee, oh, my goodness. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, knee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both players have more than two balls over 350 yards. All right, so you hear the PA announcer, and we just told you at home, I really like – this aspect of the conversation because Art, you know me. I love that there's an accuracy plus a distance aspect to the conversation. So, now Judah will go. He will get 30 seconds. How many comfortably do you think they should hit the 30? Three max, but he's got a, he's got a ton there, and I don't like this play. He, to hit a 400 plus yard drive, you need to be quality. You need to be breathing. I would personally take two swings, and this is a mistake. You're just not going to hit a 400-yard drive, in my opinion, at this rate of speed. You're right. actually winded, if you can believe it or not, playing rapid fire right here. Well, he went quickly. He's going to try to get one more in the ground and see if he can get it off. And I don't believe that he will. So, so Justin, Justin James won't even have to hit. Nope. He should be done. He will be just fine and a really good performance for Justin James, but he's putting the ball in the ground. I don't know why he would need to do that. Nope. I think now they're telling him he does not need to do that. So Justin James will move on victorious in our first matchup here in the quarterfinals. And Jeff Farley is standing by with Justin James. Jeff. Justin, you're a former world champ, Justin. What does this crowd mean to you when they get behind you? Well, it's a really yards. exciting environment. You know, I've told Justin you before, James, this is uh, my favorite tournament. Um, I've been close. Um, it means a lot to me to win someday. Not Ryan not calling Ray it yet, but uh, I love hitting on this grid, and it's uh, one of the best Ray events I've ever been to. Congrats on advancing. All right, let's take a look at the bracket, and let's update it as Justin James, our two seed, will advance to take on the winner of Ryan Gregnall and Colton Casto as the crowds have showed up here in Huntington Beach. Any one of us can beat any one of us on pretty much any day of the year. It's just a bounce, a swing, 
me catching one over someone else. It's just making sure you do it. And Kyle and Justin and, you know, a few others seem to have done it at the right time more often. And I think that's just kind of where I need to step up and do that myself at the right time now. We're ready for quarterfinal matchup number two. And this should be a really interesting one. Ryan Gregnall and Colton Casto. Oh, the Canadian, the Maple Leaf. Wait till you see the speed that Ryan Gregnall has right here in Colton Casto. He had a beautiful qualifying session today, did really well. But uh, I'll tell you what, Gregnall has got some gas right here. He has got some major heat. You know, I think one of the reasons he's in the final eight is his attitude. And this is such a unique way of qualifying, and you can either embrace it or you cannot embrace it, and that one's going to go low left. He came up to me earlier today, Art, and he said, I'm in the twilight of my long drive career, and he's just very, very excited to be here. I mean, he's been hitting. This is going on over 15 years, and uh, they call him the big maple leaf up there. So uh, both players a little bit tight, starting out with balls out of play. Yeah. Um, how do you pronounce the hometown of Colton Casto? Snohomish. Snohomish, Washington. That is where TPC Snohomish is, where the Champions Tour plays a tournament up there. The, the uh, used to be the Boeing. I don't know if that's still the title sponsor, but uh, Fred Couples country up there. It's Interesting. I've right. played that course, Coach. I'm sure you have. you played everywhere, Art. No, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've been to Kitchener, Canada, where uh, Ryan Gregnall is. So great golf up there as well. So that one, I believe, is going to roll just off to the right. So no balls in as of yet in quarterfinal number two. This is the first event of the 2024 season. And you heard Justin James just say it. This is his favorite event of the year. There's a pro-am. There's a, a, a concert last night. You can see the weather is spectacular. And the cause is amazing. I love the whole. I love this event. I love what they've created in here, the, the excitement, the energy. Uh, awesome for the sport all right so each man has hit two balls already Casto did win in 2023 in Memphis that one did find the grid 368 for Casto 367 Greg Nall can kind of calm down here and just hit one on the face he's got one speed though and that's full speed coach and that one's gonna go well to the left so Greg Nall is halfway home and yet to hit one into the grid now in a perfect scenario art you want to go second and you want to hit the least amount of balls possible that's true and again on this golf hole you've got to think i know it's hard not to get up there as a long driver in this setting and not go 100 percent but you've got to hit fairways here and get to that bonus time only one ball in the grid so far and that is for mr castro that was his second one and so he's halfway home to the bonus time, 368 on this swing right here. Yes, really good. He got he left. That was a little one-armed uh, single down the right center, but not bad. Not his best. Wow, look how far that club goes back. And again, you're going to see golf shafts wrap around. These golf shafts have softened in flex, coach, by by five flexes. Um, I'm not going to get too technical with CPMs, but let's just say that. If you had a child or a beginning golfer that swung the club about 70 miles an hour, that's what they would use. But these guys are getting that kind of action with these soft flex golf shafts. All right, so now these two will switch spots. And Greg Nall will hit from the right side of the tee box. That was his best shot. It was a pull. It's going to probably go out left. Um, but that was a really solid shot. Nice to see a solid one here. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, weary of the fact that uh, the World Long Drive Tour got Montucky Cold Snacks is a major sponsor because now that's all you're focused on, Art. <laughs> you gotta have this cold <laughs> snack right there. <laughs> so that one's gonna go out to the right. So, so far, one out of eight combined between these two. They will face Justin James, the winner, as he won just a few moments ago over Sam Judah. So this is a critical shot, these next two, because um, you know, obviously, Ryan needs to get both of these in to get into that bonus time. And you can see he doesn't like that either. So now for Grignall, it's going to come down to one hit. There is no bonus time. There are no bonus balls. So the play right here for Colton is just to hit it in play 350 plus just to guarantee extra time. That would be the strategy right here. Slow it down and hit it in play. 
And I just don't know if they can make that call, if they can make that call on the fly. You know, that's what they got to just do the math and say, he's got no chance to get 30 seconds more. I do. I'm going to feed one in here just to guarantee maybe two or three more shots. It's all about staying in it mentally, right? Right. All right, last ball for Greg Null, or he will go home. And Casto will yep. advance, and that one out to the right. So, unfortunately for Greg Null, he goes 0 for 6. So it will be a Justin James, Colton Casto semifinal. It sure will. Unfortunately, did not get a mark there for the Canadian, and uh, Colton will face Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, with a drive of 366 yards, Colton All right, let's send it down to the grid. Jeff round. is standing by with Colton. Colton, you had a win in 2023 over Justin James. Do you have it in you this week? I'm hitting it really good right now, and the swing's feeling good. Just keep it going. Just got to hit the center face. I didn't do it that much. I got away with one there, and just got to find the center. Let's keep it going. Congratulations. I think he wants to keep it going, Art. Well, he's going to need a little more than what he had right there. If he wants to beat Justin James, one half of our semifinals is set. Sometimes you get so excited, Art, you make a mistake. I was excited, and we now have two on either side of the practice. Justin James on one side, Casto on the other. It doesn't matter, Coach. He's going to have to beat him one time or another. But wait a minute. Who's on the tee, Coach? The world's champion, Kyle Berkshire. He's going to face Bobby Ray. Quarterfinal number three is set. And yesterday, I called Bobby Ray Let's a pretty boy. He didn't like it very much. He said, I'm nasty. I'm a beast. Look at the guns on him, coach. But I'll tell you what, in the squared circle, I take you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Art. So here we go, Bobby Ray in the blue flowered shirt, sort of. And he is an up and comer in the world of long drive, but he's taken on the absolute very best. Absolutely the record book of the sport in the last five to seven years. Kyle Berkshire, and he is here to win this event. He is a three-time world champion. He actually played college golf until he decided that the training for both was just impossible to do. You know, it was a good move for me. He's playing at University of North Texas. Uh, good golfer from Crofton, Maryland, and uh, just, I remember he came into my shop, 193 miles an hour ball speed, and next thing you know, couple years later but here we go Bobby Ray but only 207 so these are two different cars going down the freeway if you will um, you're gonna see Kyle if he takes it up there over 225 I mean uh, that's Formula One stuff so that will be 341 so a number is posted won't be enough to qualify for the bonus situation but as you've always taught me Art Selinger it's all about getting that first number on the board it really is See what Kyle's got right here. Now he struggled on this hole. Uh, we both watched him qualifying yes. during the day on this hole, and this hole he did not hit one in. He has kind of struggled with the look. 18 where he qualified it was another hole, tighter hole, and he just bombed it on that hole. So I don't know if this hole fits his eye. Bobby Ray was the winner of the reality TV show Paradise Hotel for all of you reality show fans he's going to improve upon his number here and he's also going to qualify for some bonus time that's what's good right here well that one Ooh, went, went out, out of bounds. bounds that left side's tight coach which one's your house up there by the way has it out just been shattered well i did see uh one backyard had three balls in it yesterday <laughs> in, pra in practice so now kyle berkshire and he is Oh. Hit two really hard left. So what can you do when you're hitting it that hard left? What's the fix? The fix is to slow down Kyle Berkshire. 85% of Kyle Berkshire is all you need. It really is. And so he's just going for home runs that are 700 feet, not 400 feet. Let's take a look at some of the replays. And Bobby Ray did find the grid with this swing. And you'll notice the commonality right there is that left foot is going to elevate. They're using the ground and get it out of the way. And they are launching that golf ball right there. 
part of the Montucky snack break. And now Berkshire and Bobby Ray will switch spots. And you're just noticing the grid out here at the Huntington Club is really slow uphill. And that one heading left as well for the college golfer at the University of Tampa. So now Kyle Berkshire. Now this, this sport, if you're watching at home right now and you're saying, man, this feels like a lot of pressure, it's because it is a lot of pressure. You've got to find the grid, especially when you know that your opponent already has a number on the board. And he's kind of out of his element. Um, I don't know what he's doing. He's just not on this hole. He doesn't know if he should hit it down the right side and draw it, hit it up the left side and cut it. Um, he's the first time I've really seen him not look together. He's kind of lost with his golf swing. We saw a lot of the qualifying today, and that one looks like it will stay in on the grid. With the wind direction the same as earlier, Arts, and that one's going to be short of 330. Yeah, the wind is now in, Coach, if yeah. anything. And again, we are at sea level, folks. We are uphill on the first hole at the Huntington Club. And it, a good 10 to 15 mile an hour win right in their face right here. So Kyle's got to worry about hitting it solid. Got to hit it solid. So that was 326. So Bobby Ray's number is still 341. We're talking about a man right here. And Kyle Berkshire has the longest drive ever recorded, 579 yards. He also holds the ball speed record at 241.6 miles an hour. Right, we're trying to figure out what exactly is I know going Kyle's on. Kyle's really having problems with his footing. He got a talent wiped off his shoes. So let's see if he can nail this one. Oh, he's losing his footing and checking the club face. A lot going on in his head right here. Yeah, he is very out of sorts here this afternoon in this first event of 2024 here at the Huntington Club. Art and the coach. And there will be no bonus ball or bonus time between these two. Maybe. We'll see here if this ball right here gets over 350. So that one is 322. So his number is going to be 341. So now Kyle Berkshire down to one ball. He's got to go north of 341, or it is over for Kyle Berkshire. And that one is headed left. So an upset for sure. Kyle Berkshire, unfortunately, is going home. Let's have three C. Speed doesn't always win these matches, All Coach. Right. All right, Bobby Ray standing by with Jeff Farley. Jeff. All right, Bo All right Bobby, we're going from yards, the Ray show Paradise the Hotel round. to the Paradise Tea Box. Tell us about it, baby. That's right. I mean, that's the best in the world right there, no question about it. Uh, I was fortunate that he didn't hit me in the grid. It's pretty much that simple. We did get a win switch, and I saw that 341 pop up. I'm like, I'm either really weak all of a sudden or the wind switch. So it's going to be a little bit tougher down the stretch of this tournament. Well, congratulations. You're on to some. A lot of respect there from Bobby Ray to Kyle Brookshire. But that's what this sport is all about. you got to be able to find Ladies the grid put your hands together or you the cannot move forward. Three down, one to go. Justin James will face Bobby Ray. And Colton Casto is waiting for the winner of our number one seed, Art Selinger, Jack Smith. He'll take on the eighth seed, Zach Holt. Love the golf swing in Jack Smith, our top qualifier today. And as you mentioned before, Zach Holt qualified in the playoff. All right, so it will be the eighth seed. Almost always you're going to see the top seed decide to go second. Why is that? They want to have the hammer. They want to know what they need. Look at that footwork right there. Haven't seen feet move like that since Barry Sanders, coach. <laughs> he likes it a lot. How much does he like it? It is in the air for a long time. And just on the right side of the grid, we'll see what that number is. Oh, it did go OB. Wow. And again, what are the rules real quick for people? Yeah, the, if you're just joining in, this ball must land in, stay in. 
If it stays in and touches the line, it is good, but it cannot hit an outside agency, a sign, a fence, anything outside. It must stay in at all times. Watch this golf swing, Coach. Boy, it's this kid is going to be a superstar. He's also very, very humble. When you talk to him, he almost doesn't want to look you in the eyes. He calls you Mr. Art, yeah. Mr. Jonathan. You know, he quit medical school, just put it on the sidelines to join the sport of long drive last year, won the event in Kingsport. Not a shock when you see him really get into a rhythm with his golf swing. He really loved this kind of qualifying. The reason I think a lot of the guys that really did well guys with really good golf swings, yes. but also the ones that embrace the uniqueness of it and just say, oh, we never do it this way instead of, hey, you know what? I like it this way. You're exactly right, Coach. You hit it right on the head. You've got to like what you're in. You've got to embrace it. You know, there's been tournaments on the PGA Tour that are questionable setups. you you got to like it. All right, so 3-1-4 as the wind has completely shifted and is now coming back in the hitter's face. And Art, sometimes when you have the win come back in your face. Oh, it's huge. It does cause a player or a hitter, excuse me, to swing harder. And you don't need to. When breezy, swing easy. Tee the golf ball down, slow it down, get spin down. But these are brutal conditions, I mean, for long drivers. Hitting into this 15 mile hour wind uphill, this, is, this should be a good one right here. Yeah, you heard Bobby Ray say it. He felt the wind coming back in his face. That one goes outside of 330. But here's the issue. With the wind so hard coming in now, it just shifted about 10, 15 minutes ago. 335 for that. It's going to be very hard to get it past that 350 number. Yeah, bonus time. Again, that's why I, I like this match play format. Both are under the same conditions. Might not get to that bonus time, but again, at least they're both under the same conditions. All right, 335. Jack Smith yet to find the grid. That one is a little baby draw. Will it be enough? And at 221 miles an hour, just to give you an idea with no wind, a little above sea level, that's so far over 400 yards you can't imagine. All right, they're telling us that one was OB, did not get back to the grid. So now they will. Look at this golf swing here, left foot up there. Right foot just sets down as he takes the club back. Look how long it goes back, and up we go, because that left foot better get out of the way. That's the common one. That is our Montucky snack break. One more look from down the grid. How'd you like to be out there with a little glove trying to catch this one on the air coming at you at 220? No, thank you. Okay. Now, there is that little square right there. That is for the women's competition. The men's is out at 400, that if they could put a ball in that little blue square, they're driving home a brand new car. That's a Hyundai, Hyundai Santa Fe right there. I nice. love that. That's pulled left. Do you think it's an advantage that Zach Colton, he got in here in a late afternoon playoff? Does that help him? I think he's hit a lot more golf balls again on this hole. That was six more. I think he's fine. He's playing with house money. I think it's good. All right, our number three seed is out. Our four seed is out. Jack Smith, our one seed, is now going to find the grid. How deep is it? He made a really good adjustment there. If we're going to get a, hopefully a replay on that. He teed it down low. Really smart play right there and got a mark at 330. 330. All right, 330 is the official number. That'll be about five yards short of what he needs. So again, watch this move right here. And what are they doing? They're trying to get a little preset start to go, get momentum before they take the club back. And that one's going to be too high and drift off to the right. So now the pressure, just like we saw with Kyle Berkshire, and now falls on the shoulders of Jack Smith. Two balls left, hitting at 350, almost impossible with this wind. He's got to find one. Yeah, notice how low he's teeing it right here. I think it's a really smart move. He's got a lot of good golf experience. What he's got to do is come in level, hit a driving shot that will use the ground. So we'll look at the apex, if we can get that number. Again, you can see how flat the flight is here. That's the right flight. I know he left it out the right, but you can see that was plenty. Yeah, that one just drifts to the right, and the crowd groans. 
So now we are down to our final ball. And right now the eighth seed, Zach Holton, who got in here in a playoff, is on the brink of advancing. And you can see that right foot really slip. Yeah, the, the, foot, the footing on this grass right here, especially out here in Huntington, in, anywhere in California, you get that Oana mix in there. It's very slippery, nothing to grab with. So here's Jack again. I like the low T set. It's not going to curve back from right to left with that T so low. Again, low loft, low T, not a lot of draw. So hit it straight right down Main Street. He needs 335 to tie, 336 to stay in the competition. That is drifting back. He doesn't think he has it. Oh, oh wow. Three, 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 three two. So Jack Smith, our number one seed art, is heading home. Yards. Zach Holton advances to the semifinal. One more look. We'll... All right, let's send it down to Jeff Farley. All right, Zach. The conditions up here are a little tough. Tell us what was going on with your strategy here. Yeah, the, the first ball I hit, I thought I hit really well, and it, it just took it out to the right. And then the second ball I hit really well, and it came back 314. So I knew I had to hit a lower ball flight. And luckily, I was able to hit it lower with a little less spin and take it out to 335. And I felt pretty good about that number. But never know a Jack, man. He's got some speed, and he put a, you know, two balls right behind me. So I'm just glad I got it done and on to the next round. All right, you're on to the semis. It is all about strategy as we move forward, but the semifinals are now set. One more look, look at, at Zach that. Holton. Footwork right here. Look at the backswing. Solid shot. That's a winner at 335. All right, so here is what it looks like as we moved into the semifinals. It will be Zach Holton taking on Colton Casto and the highest seed remaining, Justin James our former world champion taking on Bobby Ray. That's coming up later as we get set now and turn our attention to the women. We'll come back right here on the Golf Channel. Welcome back to Huntington Beach. Time for the men to take a seat, a little rest, and time to focus on the women. So here is how the qualifying went today with our reigning world champion, the number one seed, Art. And it's going to be a rematch of the world finals we saw in Atlanta last year. Right out of the gate, the New Zealander, Phyllis Meddy, along with Monica Living, the current world champion coach. And what a treat for everybody at home. The first event of the year, and you get these two world champions. Let's go. So it'll be the same scenario as the men. They will alternate hitting from the tee. When it comes to your emotions in long drive, I would say that you can use them to your benefit if you can harness them well. I think that's something that I do do well. I like to really dive into those emotions and use those to propel me through an event. And that comes along with, you know, controlling your heart rate, but increasing it when you need to and when you need to hit a ball, you know, on the sixth ball to, to win a set. Monica Living from Denver, Colorado, won three different events in 2023. She won at Hope Sound and Mesquite, the first two events of the year, and then the big one, the World Championships in Atlanta. Now, this lady right here, Art, is an absolute legend three-time world champion, the, the New Zealander, no stranger, been at it for 17 years. Oh, good start right here. See if that stays in on that left side. Good start. Really nicely done. So out north of 280 and up near 290. So getting a number on the board is Phyllis. Get us started at 286. 286 is the official number. All right, that one's going to drift over to the left. So 
So Phyllis has one kind of go-to shot, and that's that high draw. That's what she does. She'll take it down that right side and try to just hit that towering draw shot, even into this wind. I've never really seen her waver. There was a fade, but I've never seen her waver from her technique and try to hit a different golf shot. All right, that one went OB. Out of bounds. You know, so many of the names remain the same, but I love the fact that every single year you got new names coming in, like a Monica Living, who is not scared to take on a legend like Phyllis Meddy. And there is a bonus ball situation. Two balls past 280, and they will get that bonus time. Absolutely, and I like Monica's go. I mean, she played co college golf at Arkansas State, so no stranger to looking at golf holes right here. But she is facing a legend right here in Phyllis Meddy. Such a beautiful golf swing, and always has had. Yes, and, but hits towering shots, and into this wind again. She doesn't have that low bullet, Coach. All right, so that did get past 280, so that is a really yards. good sign for Phyllis Medi, because now she's going to get an extra 30 seconds. Quickly, let's take a look at a couple replays, and why don't you have a Montucky snack break while you're at it? Good balance there for Phil. She, again, I, I look at this golf swing, hasn't changed in 17 years. High hands, beautiful extension, works underneath with the right shoulder to a full finish. Good action. All right, they have switched spots now, and Monica will hit from the right side. Now, interesting here, Art, she's the top seed, and she, she chose to go first. She sure did. Um, I don't know why, but in this situation, again, with the with the uh, bonus time that you can earn, hitting two shots, 280, I would be totally focused on that because you're, you're just getting more chances. You're probably going to get, instead of six golf balls, you're going to get at least eight, if not nine. You have a really good chance, so get those two in. Yeah, if you joined us at the top of the broadcast, a couple of the men were able to do it, and then the wind completely shifted and started blowing back right in the players' faces, in the hitters' faces, and it's much more difficult to get it out there on this grid now. So that one goes OB. So now two balls left for our number one seat. And takes no time to do so right here. She is really going fast. There's a 20-second per shot shot clock, and uh, Monica's taking about four. So I, I think she could just slow it down a little bit. I like the tee height, the action, but she can slow it down. There's so many different variables in this sport that the players have to be able to manage. Time is certainly one of those. But in the old days, Art, it was six, eight balls in a finite period of time. This is uh, very different. Okay, that one looks really good. Down the middle, a little bit of a fade. That 3,000 spin is really going to take a lot off. When you have spin into the wind, that's really tough. All right, so that was 278. Love to see Monica just take her time here. Take a little deep breath. Look at your target. She, she just... has to beat 286, Art. And that is not going to do it. So Phyllis Meddy, Art, she's not even going to need her bonus time. She wins in regulation time and she will move on to the finals. Absolutely great performance right there. That was a rematch of the World Championship, so she just got a little bit of revenge, and she'll move on to the final. So Monica Living will not win the first event of the season Ladies like a drive. year ago, but Phil Smetty standing by with Jeff Farley. Jeff. Phyllis, this is a rematch from the World Championships. A little bit of revenge? Uh, no, I think she owed me one. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, sometimes when we head into the wind and the conditions change, we have to adapt, and that's a part of being a professional. So it's nice to be able to adapt and uh, the strategy kick off. All right, congratulations. Way to go. Thank you. Love to hear her talk about that. She was really thinking about it, Art, as she was hitting, and it showed. Big-time veteran right there. I mean, she has been in so many stages like this. She will not make a mistake. Definitely the other player will have to beat Phyllis Meddy to walk out of here with that trophy. So Phyllis Meddy will step to the side just momentarily, though, and wait for our other semifinal, and this should really be a good one. 
Cassandra Meyer and Kelly Rudney. What do you think about this matchup, Bart? I think it's going to be science versus violence because Cassandra's she's a player. She played on the Junior Ryder Cup team. Kelly Rudney just heave ho, here we go. Watch this swing. I mean, she's just going to take a roaring rip at it. Kelly Rudney, world rank number four. Cassandra Meyer, world rank number 12. Cassandra is the three seed. She had the choice. I feel like Monica is the girl to beat right now. Of course, always Phyllis as well. I have a ton of respect for her, and she's been in the sport for so long. But I feel like Monica is really driven. She hasn't even reached her full potential yet, which is pretty scary. But I just think that she's super talented and definitely the one to watch this year. And as you can see, the light rain has subsided for right now just a little bit. That's a good thing as far as footing is concerned. And this was a great format for Cassandra qualifying on the course. Again, she's played so much competitive golf. She, When she saw this format, she told me she loved this format right here in the qualifying. She has really been a crossover star, has some sponsorships and some partnerships that have the same as some players on the PGA Tour, like a Victor Hovland. So that one going straight left and OB. So two different techniques here. A little more vertical golf swing right here and a massive lash just and rears back and falls back. You know what, for the second straight semifinal, the higher seed who had the choice chose to go first. Yes. I like that choice. I always would go first. Good golf swing. And that one will stay on the grid. We'll see what the first number posted is for Cassandra. And it will not get to 280, but it's still a number. It sure is. And, it, and to give you an idea about scientific approach, she's over 10 miles an hour slower than Phyllis, but only about 10 yards behind because, again, she's hitting that quality flat flighted golf shot. There is definitely a strategy to all of this. It's not just gripping and ripping and wasting no time. Art, to your point, they have a full 20 seconds. Yeah. And nobody's taking it. No. I think they're all amped up. That's all. Let's do it. There's a lot of adrenaline in long drive, and there's no... Uh, 267. All right, 267. There's no shot clock needed, coach. Well, I know it's been a few months since they last competed at the World Championships. My goodness. I like the enthusiasm. And that one's going down the right side. Will it stay in? Uh, no, it will not. OB to the uh -huh. right. So Kelly Rudney still yet to find the grid. And they will now switch their spots while we have a second. Let's take a look at the replay brought to you by Montucky Colt Snacks. Classic golf swing. Big turn behind the golf ball. Leg drive. Perfect balance. I mean, that is an LPGA golf swing right there all day long. I love looking at it from this angle. Right down Broadway and two on the grid. But remember, for the women, they have to get two north of 280 to get that bonus time. All right, so ball number four for Cassandra Meyer. And we're, yeah, we're starting to see the, 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 the feet slip. Footing is a big issue here. I mean, and, and again, in long drive, these players do not keep their feet grounded. They're moving, and if you're sliding unintentionally, you're really going to hit a bad shot, cause you to miss the face. So a little baby draw coming back into the grid. And that is out to the right as well. Out of bounds. I think we're also starting to see, to your point, Art, some of the swings are becoming flat-footed. Yes, definitely. Cassandra is really a grounded player, so she's not going to slip too much. Again, she stays pretty planted right here, barely lifts her left heel up. Ball number five, and that will go straight left. So still 276 is the number to beat for Kelly Rudney. 
So you're going to watch here with Rudney. You watch the back foot, the trail foot, and you see if that footing can stay in there until the ball's hit. She stayed pretty grounded there, hit it solid. I don't know if it's going to turn over enough. And that one also just two or three yards to the right. Plenty, though, just out at 300, but still. I, that was her best footwork of the uh, of this set, for sure. All right, final ball for Cassandra Meyer. So far, the only hitter of the two to find this grid. Big breath. And one more rip. And that one down the left side. Oh, that bunker. And into the bunker. A little unfortunate. 293. Yeah, so that bunker's in play on that left side there from about 270 to 295. All right, so she does add 17 yards, Art, to her number. So it's going to be very difficult here for Kelly Rudney. She's got one ball left. Oh, 170 on the ball speed, low on the spin. If she gets the bounce, this is going to be close. Well, she likes it. There's 280, there's 290, oh, wow. there's 300. So Kelly Rodney with her final ball sends Cassandra Meyer home. That is how you do it. Welcome to the Ladies finals on the sixth the ball. Magic. It only Everybody takes one. And let's take, let's take a look at that look swing. Let's the replay one more time. Kelly Rodney had one ball left, hit the slot and goes north of three bills. And just look at this footwork here, big high hands, and boom, right there. And just, she knew it too, she liked it. Perfect launch, perfect conditions there, flat flight, she used the ground, got more than 25 yards a roll. And give me a big time fist pump. Let's sit it down with our winner, who's standing by with Jeff Farley. Jeff. Okay, Kelly, you added some great drama, and you had the fans behind you. What was going on there? Don't think, just swing. Yep, that I I had to get one in. I had to redeem myself. So I, Cassie had a, a lot of good balls, and I just I got lucky on her. Congratulations. We're looking forward to that next match. Thank you so much. Well, there was a lot of luck, and yes, there was a lot of really good speed there as well. So drama for sure. So here is what the women's final looks like. Our former world champion, Phyllis Betty, We'll take on the three C Kelly Rudney, and that will come up. Give me the fist bump one time on ball number six here in Huntington Beach. We're back on the Golf Channel. World Long Drive is brought to you by Hyundai. Add more joy to every journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event today. By Bridgestone Golf and the E9 Long Drive, the official ball of World Long Drive. E9 Long Drive, extreme ball speed, extreme distance. And by Montucky Cold Snacks, just beer, born in Bozeman. We are back at the Huntington Club, all set for the women's final. And my goodness, Phil Smetty, our three-time world champion, is taking on Kelly Rudney and Art Selinger just moments ago. Kelly Rudney, drama, last ball getting to this final. Came up big and facing mainly one of the two record books of women's long drive, trying to add to her trophy case, the New Zealander and Phyllis Smetty. She's got her hands full right here. All right, so Kelly Rudney is the higher seed, so she has the choice. She has chosen to go second. So Phyllis Meddy will be the first to hit. The crowd's still buzzing from what they saw just a couple of minutes ago. Solid hit right there. Down that left side, see what happens here with that bunker. So that bunker is in play. And again, if we had normal conditions for these women, I'd watch Phyllis fly a golf ball 320. That bunker would just be something that would just get airmailed. Coach, you airmail that Please. bunker. Well, I appreciate the respect. It's not true, but I appreciate the respect. All right, 276 on ball number one for Phyllis Meddy. Remember, two balls over 280, and that hitter would get 30 seconds 
of bonus time. So now Phyllis Betty, Betty, excuse me, ball number two. And her shot has started down that right side. You get that draw. She's coming across it a little bit, leaving that face open, not getting the inside. I've watched her rehearse behind while the other player is hitting, trying to drop it to the inside. And that that one went OB. Now we heard her talk in her interview after she beat Monica Living, talking about making the adjustments and with the wind the way that it is. The wind is now shifted yet again. How hard is it, Art, to make yet another adjustment? I mean, either it's with the driver with more loft or less, or it's the T height higher or lower. Um, you're going to think it's a little bit more level. Again, Phyllis' technique is really to hit up on the ball. She probably has an upward attack angle of some seven, eight degrees. Um, she should play her shot here and try to hit that high draw. Ball number three, and the crowd likes it. Does the grid like it? And that will stay in, but what is the number? Okay, 288. Yards. So she adds yardage to her number and also has one north of what she needs for bonus time. Very, very important. Now ball number three for Kelly Rudney. Good numbers here down that left side. See if she can get that big hop that she got last time. And yes, she did. Good. Look at that. North of 300. 308. Yards. And Phyllis Betty says, hey, respect. Kelly came to play. Phyllis has really got to get the golf ball to turn over from right to left if she wants to get across that 300-yard marker. It almost looks like Kelly's a little bit surprised at what she's been able to do. And her swing right here, she looks solid right here. Again, I always watch her back foot. If she can stay planted with the strike right there, then she, it's, whatever happens here now, it's all over. So that's a great impact position right there. And she just hit it right flush on the face. She's had two different balls now, her last one against Cassandra Meyer, and now that one where she clearly are hit it absolutely perfect. But now, as we mentioned, this wind has switched. So Phyllis Meddy should be able to get one this long if she hits one the same way. If she hits her shot, that high draw, you can see she can aim it down that right side. We've got a great view right here. But she's coming across it. What I mean by that is you can see her shoulder swing left towards that left bunker. When you swing left and the face is open, that ball's going to curve to the right. So she actually has to have that club exit more to the right. And that one did finish OB to the right. So now ball number four for Rudney. And that one is straight down Broadway. I'm anxious to see what happens here with a low shot using the ground, how much vault she'll get using that ground. That low bullet can roll. Well, it certainly did, and now she's just having a good time. All right, 298, so yards. that unlocks the bonus time for Kelly Rudney. And again, using that ground, just 10 yards short of her best, but 10 miles an hour slower. I love the low ball on this grid. All right, so now all the pressure is on this woman right here. She's got to find 28 yards. So I can see it in her swing. You just see just delivering a little across, but she is fast. That ball curving that much, that's just not her shot. So definite swing flaw going on for Phyllis. So this is best case scenario for Kelly Rudney. She has two balls left. She's got the lead and she has the bonus time. And that one a little squirrely out to the left. So our women's final is down, Art, to our final ball. Phyllis Meddy needs to go over 280 to get more time. She needs to go over 308 to take the lead. Oh, that's that cut. And that will not get the job done. So our champion for the women in Huntington Beach is none other than Kelly Rudney taking down Cassandra Meyer with her last ball and taking down our world champion three times over, Phyllis Meddy. All right, let's send it down to Jeff. Okay, Kelly, you came in 
ranked fourth in the world, but today you're number one. Wow. <laughs> That's all I have as well. Um, I struggled last year a little bit. I'm feeling better this year, and I guess all my hard work's paying off. Well, you're a fan favorite. You couldn't be nicer to the cause and the fans, and you are a champion today. Tell us how that last ball came off the face. Oh, like a dream, <laughs> like an absolute dream. I just, I, I hit it in the right spot. That's all that happened. Yep. All right, well, congratulations. You are now the Michael Brown Invitational Champion. And that smile literally says it all. Congratulations to Kelly Rudney. One more look at the winning swing at getting it done. And just flush right here. Beautiful action right there. She just knew it. Plenty of respect from Phyllis Meddy, but Kelly Rudney takes it down in the first event of 2024. The men's semis when we come back. Congratulations to Kelly Rudney. She's our women's champion now back to the men here in beautiful Huntington Beach, California, the Huntington Club. There you see the crowd. And here is our semifinals, Holton Casto, James and Ray and Art. It'll be the two seed and former world champion, Justin James, taking on kind of the new guy, Bobby Ray. You got to like Justin James in this format again. Bobby Ray, not afraid at all again. Uh, not definitely with those biceps, Coach. Well, I think he looked at some of your old pictures when you competed. So right. I, I want to look like that. Except those are my legs, I think. <laughs> Here we go. The sun has come back out. You can see the wind with the flag has now shifted a little bit going back down grid. So maybe we'll have a bonus time. Maybe we'll have a little 400-yard conquer the weekend by Hyundai with the Santa Fe. There is a little square out there. 18 inches, they hit it in there, they're driving away a Santa Fe. That would be amazing. So Bobby Ray will go first, and that will drift off to the right. Justin James, our two seed, knocked off Sam Judah in the quarterfinals. He has chosen to go second. Right, he's going to be very methodical. He'll use the shot clock. Got a really good routine, visualization, same thing. Waggle of the club, big backswing. His father, a former pro wrestler. Oh, this is hit 220 out of the gate down that left side. And he likes it. You can tell that he likes it. And that will get to... Oh, they're running. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah, the wind changed big time. That's wow. a good match play here. I told wow. you that 400. Ladies and gentlemen, 414 yards! 414 for Justin James. And just 30 minutes ago, 320 was a good number. That's, again, why I love the match play format. You have to have it right here. So if you're Bobby Ray, what, what's what's the thought process now? Well, swing hard in case you hit it. That's about it. I mean, because that is full gas right there for Justin James. Every number optimized. Club delivery, club face, speed, spin, launch. There is not a tile on that flight scope that he didn't maximize. I don't think there's any secret that when you have a good attitude and you want to be somewhere, and you heard Justin James say earlier in the broadcast, this is his favorite event. He loves hitting on this grid. He just goes north of 414. And he wants to win this trophy, and I think attitude is everything. He's embraced the format, embraced the grid, and putting on a show. And now Bobby Ray wasting no time stepping up to his third ball. Oh, baby. Right down Broadway. It's going to be hard for 210 to beat 220, but that got a big bounce. But again, 220 on a flat line is going to beat 210 all day. So about 25 yards of roll for Bobby Ray. So the positive is it's north of 350, so he's got the first of uh, what is needed of two balls to get the bonus time. But I think it's not going to be the time or the number of balls. It's going to be the distance that J.J. has already put up. It sure is like watching Usain Bolt run right here. It's all speed. 
By the way, speaking of JJ, my son JJ is in attendance today, I like and he him. he loves Justin James. He's one of his favorite guys. I saw him in the clubhouse earlier right. talking to him. Give him a little. Uh, I bet he gave him some coaching, <laughs> Coachman. <laughs> He was so excited. He met Justin James. He says, Dad, I met Kyle Berkshire, Martin Porkmeyer, everybody. So they've been great to him today. We're going to take a look right here at Justin James' golf swing. And again, he's going to rear up out of there, and that's at full speed right there. And he knew it and loved it. Just beautiful. Well, a little secret when they here it is. come here back. It is. One more look. Oh, look at that extension. I just love this golf swing. Talk to Greg Rose at Tyler's Performance Institute, and they have worked together for years, and he is spot on. All right, so now it's time for ball number four. Bobby Ray needs a little love. He needs a little energy. Well, he needs a little yardage. Yeah, he needs 215 to 218 and the ground. That's high in the face. There's a point where you overswing. Again, it will always come back to, can I hit the center of the club? And there's a point where if I swing so hard, it's going to be just almost impossible to hit the center of the club. So here's Justin. You watch his methodical approach. V visualization right here. Same routine. Sets the club behind the ball. Then takes his big rehearsal, which is basically his full back swing right there. And then it's just look and go. All right, so that one going out to the right. The good news for Bobby Ray is he has two balls that are over 350, so he will get 30 seconds of bonus time. But he's got to figure out, how do I find another 40 yards, which is what he's going to need to win. There's 212. That was pulled to the left. The thing I love about long drive is you've got guys from all different walks of life. You've got a reality star, played college golf. Now you got Justin James, who is a personal trainer. Very scientific art in his approach to this sport. But one common thing they have, speed. Big time speed. And you know, Justin should be thinking about oh, that. Oh, Art. <laughs> Another one over 400 yards for Justin James. 409 yards. 409 to be exact. He should be kind of dialing in the uh, Conquer the Weekend little circle out there. Get it in the blue circle and win that Santa Fe from Hyundai. It's right in the middle of the grid. If they can get a ball to stop right on it, they would win a brand new vehicle for Monday. Now again, the methodical one, I watched Justin James just 10 seconds ago take the wrench out and adjust that driver. Don't know if he went up in loft or down, but he made an adjustment. He's always thinking, and we'll see what he does right here. Both hitters have already unlocked the bonus time. Oh, he went there. That's flat. That's 221, 2300. See what kind of bounce this gets. That one out oh. past 390. It will not get to the 400 mark, but you know this is a, it is about competition, but it's also about putting on a show. And yeah. Justin James right now is putting on an absolute show. Absolutely, there's no question. All right, so now Bobby Ray will have 30 seconds. Let's take a couple of quick replays while we have a moment. And here's Bobby Ray swing right here. You know, he kind of has a lot of knee movement on the way back right there, not hitting it as solid as he can. Ladies and gentlemen, both players, Ladies and gentlemen, both players have dry, two drives over 350 yards. Therefore, they're both awarded Now, Justin, bonus. again, is going back, they have unlimited making another adjustment seconds. to the golf club. What is he What is he doing, or what I, could he be doing He there? could be lowering the loft, setting up a little bit more draw bias. Um, he could be setting up a little more fade bias. He could be doing a lot he's got a lot of adjustments in that Callaway head right there all right so they are setting the clock and then Bobby Ray will be the first to go 30 straight seconds we saw Sam Judah earlier in the show he got four or five in but it was very very fast absolutely I don't see Justin rushing here I really don't um, I well, he, he may not even have to hit to be right. honest with you Art yeah, but, but if he does, I think he's going to hit one max two. I just don't see him playing that kind of game. He's just a, a different kind of player. 
All right, here we go. So Bobby Ray, clock is running. And he's spending almost a full 10 seconds before hitting his first ball. And that one. Yeah, two, shot, two shots would be good. If he gets two, that'd be nice. Clock down to 10. And that one going straight left. So he may have time for one more. 3-7-3 three, three for the first. Not going to get it off. And I believe they're telling me it does not count. He did not get it off. Does not matter. And it wouldn't have got to 414 either way. So Justin James, unless he just wants to show off a little bit, will not have to hit one more ball. No, he is in the D final right there. That is enough. But that is a man who's got the game face, the mojo. He wants this in the worst way. And to show the rest of the world, long drive world, I am still the man. Yards with the drive of 414 yards, Justin James advances All to right, the championship. All right, so Justin James will advance to the championship final for the men. And he does it in spectacular fashion. Let's sit it down to Jeff, Jeff Farley. Justin, 414, that's a long par four to most people. What's going on with that ball? Well, I must have got some kind of rollout because I, I hit a couple good ones uh, not that far. So I'm assuming it skipped or something. Had a little help. There were no sprinkler heads on that one. It was beat. Well, maybe I'll get lucky next round and catch sprinkler head. All right, you're on to the finals. Congrats. A very confident Justin James will wait in the wings. When we come back, it'll be semifinal number two. 414, are you serious? JJ says, yes, I am. We're back. Welcome back. We are all set for semifinal number two here in Huntington Beach. And what a show it's been so far. Here's what the men's bracket looks like currently. Justin James just moved into the final. He'll take on the winner of Zach Holton and Colton Casto. Should be a great matchup right here with Zach Holton, who again won the playoff to make the final eight. Colton Casto kind of sneak by there in his round in the in the uh, quarterfinal so it should be a good matchup world number two is holton world number eight is casto so it will be holton the first to hit as he comes in the eighth seed he got in by winning a playoff or a hit off as it were and that first one goes out of bounds to the right. So now Colt Casto from Washington. Did win in Memphis last season over guess who, Art? Justin James. Yes. So we could have potentially a rematch from Memphis in 2023. And Colton's fast. That ball was 223. I know it's out of, bounds, out of bounds, but that sends a message right there at 223 that he can play this game right here. And so can Zach. Again, unique footwork right here. A big step up with both feet prior to the plant and then takes the club back and rares it back and kills it. So that one also will go out to the right. When you do, when you do the foot thing, what's the hardest thing to match things up for? The foot thing elevated, I'm not a big fan of. I love the lateral move that Kyle has. Again, that's a momentum builder here. I, I'm, I'm not totally on board again with the Zach Holton move with the up and down. I think it's very difficult to match the backswing with that, that vertical stuff rather than weight moving side to side to get momentum. With both of these guys were part of that wind shifting in the quarterfinal round so they found it difficult even to get it out you know 350 360 and now they're standing there art watching justin james go north of 400. so over three for zach colton the number two ranked hitter in the world and now the third ball for casto again he i, I want to go back to holton he has mastered that move there's no question to be where he is in the world of long drive he has totally mastered it i just find it really difficult to find the sweet spot consistently 
Well, let's take a look during our snack break at the feet of yeah. Holton. So he takes the left foot and then resets it. And he puts this right foot way up and then down. And as he sets it down, he's right back kind of where he started. And again, why are you moving before you take it back? You're trying to get that head start, trying to get the ignition started again before the car's rolling. Holton, the man who lost in the semifinals of the World Championships to the eventual world champion, Kyle Berkshire. So he knows how to get it done at the absolute highest level. He needs to get one in the grid just to put a number on the board. And he's missed both ways, which is one of the worst things in long drive, in my opinion, in my almost 40 years around it. If you get two misses going, again, we always saw Jason Zubak hit that patented fade shot. We saw Sadlowski hit the draw shot. We saw Fister hit the draw shot. All these legends. Kyle just kills it. So, I mean, they've got their shot, but they usually have one miss. That's that's tough when you've got two ways going. Yeah, I don't care if you're a long driver or you're playing regular golf. You do not want to have a two-way miss. All right, ball number five. Still nothing yet in the grid for either hitter and now the drops are starting to come down just a little bit and that one's going out to the right if it starts raining in the middle of a set what do you do well you, you know to me in this situation in match play i would have a 45 or 46 inch driver in my play club because if somebody's 0 for 5 i i you know, I'm going to go ahead and try to hit the hit the grid. This is a great shot, 223. Goodness sakes, that is just hammered and right there. That, that is, is coming back into the grid. We'll see what that number is going to be. All right, 388 yards for Casto. But here's the situation. Zach Holton only has one ball left. Right. It's do or die right here. He's got to he go needs, for broke. He has to go for broke. So Colton Casto, one hit away from facing Justin James. He was just off tonight. Just not his night. Right and here you, yeah, you, you can see the frustration the for Zach Colton. So Casto is going to get it done by putting one ball in the grid. But that's all you need. All right, standing by with our winner is Jeff Farley. Jeff. All right, we're in Huntington Beach, not Snohomish, Washington. You think this this weather help you a little bit? Maybe a little bit. I'm used to hitting in the cold and the wet, so I mean it's going to be what it's going to be. Face JJ the last four times I've been in the finals, or this is the fourth time in the finals, so it's kind of it's be fun. Congratulations, you're going to the finals. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. It's going to be what it's going to be. When we come back, who will be crowned our first champion? of 2024, it'll be that man, Colton Casto, taking on the number two seed, Justin James, who will crown a champion. We come back right here on the Golf Channel. The time has arrived. The men's final, you can see, Art, the rain has started to fall a little bit harder here as we get set for Colton Casto and Justin James. They've got their hands full here. Keep the grips dry. Keep the gloves dry. Taking turns right here. A, ba a battle of speed. Both have put up numbers over 220 miles per hour. Personally, I try to not think about it too much of it because then I get in my head and then I'm starting to just try to yeah, I just get in my head and it gets in the way of me trying to do what I do. And just forget about everything and let, just let the swing do it. It's like all the practice pay off. So Justin James is the higher seed. He has the choice and he has chosen to go second. Now the good news art for Casto is he has two wins in his career. Both have come over Justin James. Wow. And this tournament, is special in Justin's heart. I know he really loves not only the competition, the format, but he really wants to win this one and add this one to his trophy case and probably get some revenge on Colton. There's no doubt about that. He had two wins in 2023 in Hope Sound and Portland, Connecticut. 
He would love to make his first one in 2024 right here in Huntington Beach. Now, ball number two for Casto. Oh, big nugget right here again. 222, 2,000 spin. Don't go for the stay in. 228 feet on the apex is just. That's got more hang time. That's got more hang time. I mean, goodness <laughs> sakes. A Ray Guy punt. And that one did just drift out to the right. So now ball number two for Justin James. That one may just curve a little too much out to the left. So over two for both hitters so far. So both speed, both guys have about the same speed, except Justin will hit a flatter ball and use the ground for roll. You'll notice that in the apex. And the one arm finish, that one kind of a duck hook to the left. Do you think maybe he's he's Trying to make up for the rain and maybe have the, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he just missed that one. It's, they got to keep the golf balls dry. They're trying to keep the grips dry. Um, I really look for a good shot right here at it, Justin. It's kind of letting up too. Oh, he killed it and he pulled it. Oh, goodness. Boy, that was oh. a big time hit, but now they're telling us that one is in. We'll see what the official number is on it. All right, 398, yards. so nearly 400 yards. Let's quickly take a look at the replay, Art. I think the rain got the flight scope right there, but we'll get this replay and look at that golf swing. I felt something good was coming from Justin right there. I just love the golf swing. Comes up out of his posture, then drops to the inside. Great footwork, again, does not leave anything in the bag. I think my biggest competitor, I'd say myself, because everybody's capable of beating me out here. And, and there's, there's more competition than ever. So I wouldn't say this guy's my biggest competitor, this guy, because uh, unless I do my job, I just, you get absolutely smoked out here. So if you start focusing on trying to beat one guy, um, you're generally gonna forget about yourself and that's when um, you're gonna lose by 40 yards. So um, you just, I mean, honestly, it does come down to hitting a golf shot. You swing the club 170 miles an hour, but hit it off the toe. Um, it's not very helpful. So hit the middle of the face, hit the type of shot you want, and then um, you, know, you try to put the pressure on the other guy. All right, now the rain is starting to come down just a little bit harder with three balls to play. What a cool look with the sun out over the Pacific Ocean, only about a mile from here, a couple miles from here. And that's yeah. not what Casto is worried about right now. He's worried about a ball in the grid. Yeah, he's not thinking about going surfing. He's thinking about going smashing. Except those are windows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now Justin James clearly in the driver's seat. He's got 398 on the board. He's got three balls left. And if he gets another one north of 350, he will unlock the bonus time. And he is giving it everything he has in the bag. All right, Art, two balls left for Casto. He's got to get one in right here. He really does. And he, can, and again, he's not a player that is afraid of this number. He's just got to hit his shot, hit it straight, and he can give him a go. All right, that one a really high ball. That won't get in, and if it does, it won't get to 400. All right, so. And they've had to cover these flight scope monitors. So again, if you're seeing the tracers at home and something doesn't look right again, there's huge rain out here, a lot of stuff going on out here. So uh, we're doing our best for you. All right, so Justin James has one hand on the trophy. That one drifting a little bit off to the right. Okay, so it comes down to this. 
as they're just waiting to make sure that last ball went out of bounds. This is what it's all about. Can Casto find something? Last ball. And that is not going to do it. So Justin James is our champion. And he will not even have to hit his sixth ball. So Art Selinger, Justin James came in as one of the favorites and he got it done once, twice, and now three times. Absolutely great performance. He did it on the Ladies golf course today. He was focused. We both saw Justin him. He was James. laser focused, your, coach. What a great win. The, the event that he champion. wanted to win right here, the MB Championship in Huntington. All right, Jeff Farley standing by with our champion. I'm here on the tee with our new champion. I know you flirted with victory at this event before. You finally got one. I'm so proud of you. And uh, tell us what was going on with all the conditions going on the, on the tee box there. Well, you try the best you can to keep your uh, grip dryer. That club's going in that house over there. You worry about the balls, you worry about the driver. Um, so desperately trying to keep the uh, grips dry and then just stay calm. Uh, been a great week. Uh, got to go back to uh, Calvary Chapel yesterday where I grew up. And uh, glad to win the event, man. It's great. great. Well, congratulations. That was a great victory. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Very happy, Ladies Justin James. So that is for sure. You so and you can tell him. Art when you just are in a really good place mentally and clearly physically. He swung the golf club so consistent with every single round. I watched him on the course today. He looked cool, calm, collected. It didn't matter what curveball was thrown at him. He handled every condition, coach. All right, when we come back, we will award the trophies. Congratulations, Justin James and Kelly Rudney. We're back. World Long Drive is brought to you by Hyundai. Add more joy to every journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event today. By Bridgestone Golf and the E9 Long Drive, the official ball of World Long Drive. E9 Long Drive, extreme ball speed, extreme distance. And by Montucky Cold Snacks, just beer, born in Bozeman. What an afternoon it has been here in Huntington Beach, California, as we bring you back down here on the tee. We're here with our champions, and I'm going to start with my right, Kelly Rudney, and Bob Halpin from Driving Out Cancer is here to present the trophy. As you do that, Kelly, the dramatics, a sixth ball, and then getting it done against a three-time world champion. you got to be proud of yourself. I'm super proud. I, I struggled last year, and... and I, this is my time, I think. I'm old enough. I'm I'm nearing my end, and I'm gonna keep on pushing. And you're gonna have a really good 2024 season. So now that you win the first one, as we head into the rest of the season, what does this do for your confidence? Oh, it skyrocketed. I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. It's my first World Long Drive win. Fantastic! I'm Fantastic! Super happy that it's this win. And we're happy for you as well. Let me come over here, our men's champion, Justin James. And we have Paul Imhoff from Hyundai. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And Justin, you told Jeff how badly you wanted to win this tournament, how much it meant to you. But to get it done three different ways, pretty good. Yeah, you know, um, I've been here, this is my fourth time, I think. I've uh, mucked it up a few times. My good buddy beat me here the first time. So um, good to get a W. Um, it's where I grew up around here. I'm um, going to Calvary Chapel and uh, born at Newport, so it's home, and um, it's just such a blessing to not only win, but uh, thank you, Jesus, for being able to compete. It's so fun. Right. I mean, this is like the greatest thing in the world. You don't even have to putt. You just hit drivers. Which is very nice. Paul, as you give the trophy to Justin, the, the conditions really changed out here. You had wind first, then the wind was coming back, and then you had wind and you went north of 400. The crowd was certainly behind you. How difficult were the conditions? Well, I was fortunate to have most of the wind that way. I was taking a break when it went in, but at the end, um, 
a little bit of, is this the first time it's rained all year in Southern, I don't know, but um, staying dry, nobody brought umbrellas because we were coming here. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't even really have towels, so it was, uh, in that situation, you gotta do everything possible to keep the grips dry, because if your grips aren't dry, you're absolutely done. And then the balls, any bit of water, um, you're probably hitting the houses because it's gonna squirt everywhere. Well, we actually did get a call from one of the houses, but that's okay. We're not going to do that. So congratulations once again to Justin James, our men's champion, Kelly Rudney, our women's champion. And we're just getting started here in 2024. And how great is it to have us back on Golf Channel this season as well? So we're just getting started for everybody at the Golf Channel, our entire crew, my partner, Art Selinger, Jeff Farley, and everybody here. Raise the trophies up. I am the coach. We'll see you next time. The world long drive is back in 2024. Good night, everybody.